Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, got Luke Simons, like diamonds, talking about rattles, rattles and fishing lures. If you don't know, sound travels very well underwater. Fish can hear things very well underwater. I believe it's like almost 5,000 feet per second that sound travels underwater. So it's no surprise that rattles have been around for quite some time, even going back to like many, many hundreds, even thousands of years, people have, you know, used different things underwater to try to attract fish. Some out of curiosity, meaning like the fish are curious, hey, what's that noise? Uh, some just to attract a strike, meaning, you know, calling fish right up to you to kind of get their attention. Obviously, if they see something that looks wounded on the top of the surface or below the surface, it's uh, just one other way to have an edge over the fish. So we've always been curious by it. You know, there's also that saying that, hey, you know, a lot of this stuff catches more fishermen than fish. And so we've been curious. And Luke just did a recent test here because uh, we have battle rattles. If you guys don't know, we actually sell rattles in our store, especially for those power prawns. I mean, you know, shrimp in general underwater make a pretty unique sound that uh, it almost sounds like those little glass beads. And uh, so we knew it was going to work on that. You know, we know most topwaters like this super spook junior I have in my hands here, that's what's rattling right now, have always pretty much had rattles. A lot of the uh, subsurface hard baits have rattles in them. And uh, a lot of people have been asking, hey, you know, can you can you put little glass beads rattles inside of normal soft plastic? And the answer is yes. And uh, and Luke now has been testing and we're going to continue to test it. Nothing is proven until we've done many, many tests. But the first week of testing was really unique. Like, hey, let's let's share what we're finding here, the good, the bad, the ugly. So talk about kind of how this came about, Luke, and, and what you've seen so far with your rattle test. Yeah. So as just said, you know, rattles have been in fishing for a long time. And uh, I, I've, for years, I've just never really used them with soft plastics. You know, this is more of like a finesse type type situation in many cases. And, and so what I've, I've started recently doing was we got these, these battle rattles and I started doing some tests. I mean, before I would, I would use them like for one day and then not use them for another. And and, and you, it's really hard to like, you can't really judge something by that because there's so many different things, so many different variables are at play. So what I did, let me just show you the screen. I'll show you a little bit of footage. Um, but what it is, I got, I got two of these power prawns, right? So the same lure. If you're listening, uh, we're looking at Luke's footage from this past week. You got a nice snook there. Yeah. So and I had two rods, the same rods, the same reels, the, you know, the same size line, like everything was the same, same leader, same length of leader too. try to minimize the variables as much as possible. And I would do three casts with one, change it, three casts with the other, change it and just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, especially like an hour and a half uh, this day. And, and it was, um, it was interesting to see the results. So I've done this on like some, some like scent, I've been like a procure versus another scent once and in many cases that that's kind of this kind of the same but in this one this was one of the first fish caught you can see the power prong right in his mouth and this was like a this is a slot snook it was a legit snook and it was on the rattles and uh in the rattles it actually one handed so I, I just kept fishing you can kind of see what's going on there's the power prong and talking about re-rigging everything but i kept fishing down the shoreline and was getting into a lot of action ended up being um it was i caught a jack there too i think that was on the non-rattles but it ended up being, it was six fish caught with the rattles, even one nice, I caught two nice snapper actually. Dude, that's a keeper snapper there. Yeah, it was a proper snapper for inshore fishing. There was like uh, around 14, 15 inches. But uh, long short, short, I ended up catching uh, six fish on the rattles, four on the non-rattles, and then uh, the bonus, I guess a, a plus one on the rattle side because I hooked into some giant fish that totally wrecked me in the pylons. Um, so it was, it was cool to see that, right? And so this video is, uh, we should have to be able, this finish should be live by the time you're hearing this and so you, the whole thing's documented obviously we'll try to keep it as as proper as possible and this was with the power prawn shrimp fishing docks the next one i'm going to do in a jerk bait in a soft plastic jerk bait. i'll use the alabama leprechaun up on the flats and, and just see how it does obviously one day isn't conclusive but we're going to keep doing it keep doing it and just see the exact conditions where they where they work and maybe conditions where they don't work too or if it turns out to be neutral, we'll, we'll report that as well. But so far, the I don't know. It just seems like 
just from doing like the the non-scientific tests over the years where i'm using some rattles and not i do feel like the rattles have the edge but but this you know three by three actual test i think will have the best uh, the best actually conclusive data that i've seen Yep. So if you can, Luke, show if you can take a look at a little battle rattle out and that's all at fiststrong.com. And uh, I would I would recommend anyone who's buying the power prawns, which are our proprietary shrimp. Those are the soft plastic shrimp we have. It actually has a cavity. Most of the sizes we have two different sizes. Most of them have a built in cavity. So it's already there. It's like the easiest thing in the world. You literally just slide the battle rattle in to the cavity. It's like inside and Luke's holding it up right now. But basically, a rattle is essentially, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but the ones that seem to work the best, it's just like a little glass tube. So it's real glass, it, you know, could shatter if like you hit it with a hammer and it's got little, it almost looks like little beads, ball, looks like a small little ball bearings that are in there. And, uh, you know, if you, if you shake it, you can, you can hear it. And obviously that sound is transferring quite well underwater. And there have been some studies uh, from some like real scientists who are going underwater to see the different transmissions underwater of different types of beads and rattles, et cetera. And some do better than others, obviously, you know, clearly if the fish is right near you, they're going to be able to hear anything that, you know, but I think some people have this kind of a misguided impression that, Oh, I'm going to be able to throw some out there with a rattle and the fish are just going to be attracted from miles away. That's not the case. This is really to, to find an area, the 90 10 zone, which we just did a podcast on that. If you haven't heard that one must listen to about, 90% of all feeding fish are in 10% of any area at any given time. And so if you can find yourself based on trends, which is what we teach in our insider club in that 90, 10 zone, that your chances are going to increase. There will be some fish around there and that a rattle, that noise will attract them, right? Even if it's just out of pure curiosity, Hey, what's going on over there? Cause it kind of sounds like a little fling shrimp, a little small, little and all of a sudden, hey, now they're one step closer or one fin closer to uh, to your lure or uh, or you know whatever it might be that you're fishing with, and uh, and hopefully they crush it and you catch a big fish. Um, now you did a recent one; it's a little bit more work putting one of these little rattles because it's got a a pretty sharp point, right? It's glass that you can actually uh, there it is. So you can actually like insert this into really any kind of saw or most saw plastics. I don't want to say any because like Z-Man would be really tough to put it in there. Uh, but most normal soft plastics, you can actually put that in there. So talk through that, Luke, because I watched your video. I personally have not done that. I put it in my power prawns all day long, but I have not put it in like a, a slam shady paddle tail or any of my other um, soft plastics. Yeah, and so the, the reason why we went with these battle rattles is because they're small. They're, they're smaller than most others on the market. So it, it's the actual dimensions are three three millimeters thick by ten millimeters long, and a lot of the other ones, like here's just a, a you know one by one. You can it's, so it's big old thin, test tube. You can, you can see it. Yeah, it's more like a test tube, and it's it's thicker and, and longer. So this is four millimeters. By, I believe is uh, 14 millimeters long. And the reason why that's a big deal is because a big part about soft plastic, these, these are for inserting the soft plastic lures specifically. And a big part about soft plastic lures is their action in the water, especially for like a split tail jerk, jerk bait, like we're showing you, this is the Alabama leprechaun. And if you put one of those big bulky rattles in there, it'll often make a big bulge. And, it, and if it's not perfectly centered, which is hard to do, it's gonna it's gonna negatively impact the action in the water, and I would I would argue confidently that the action in the water trumps the sound. So yes. So when we're adding sound, um, so far it looks like sound is helpful, but we we make we must make sure that we don't ruin or or decrease the action in the water. And so the cool thing about these smaller rattles, so small I lost it here in my on my desk. <laughs> uh, the cool thing about the smaller rattles is that you can add the sound without impacting how it looks in the water. So the easiest way to do it is just to have the lure rigged. Um, and for lures that don't have a rattle cavity, right, which are most, um, you can just get a hook and just just put a little pilot hole, right, in the spot you want to add it. So for the, the, uh, these, uh, these type of baits, I'll go oftentimes like right toward the top or even toward the tail where it gets thick again. It just needs to be in some part of the plastic that is thick enough to actually house it. So make that pilot hole, Find that pilot hole with the the the, uh, the pointing end of the rattle. All right, and then just push it on in there. 
And it's really simple as that. It just takes a second and just push that guy in there. And then once it's in, so now you can't see it, but it's got a little bit of a bulge. So once it's in, I just push it on back in and then just make sure that it doesn't pop right out that hole. So now you can see the rattles in there and it's just barely, can barely even notice the little, slight little bulge is right in the top center, right where that pile hole is. Yep. And that's not going to negatively impact the lure. And so right. now Luke's holding up the Alabama leprechaun jerk shed. So now as that thing's popping off the bottom, it's just one other reason that a fish is going to look over and be attracted to that. Um, and not all of these little glass rattles are created equal. Like we spent a lot of time on this. We had a lot of different ones we tested. To Luke's point, the small one has a very pointed end. I mean, it's like almost sharp where you can actually put it into soft plastic pretty easy where some of them are dull. I mean, there's, there's no chance, like zero chance you're going to be able to get it into a lure that doesn't already have a rattle cavity, like yeah, no so chance adding at all. This, so adding this, this thicker rattle in that we, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, wouldn't work. it would create a huge bulge. And let's see if I can, uh, I'll do it on an old wrecked one that I don't, want to, I don't want to mess up one of my good ones. And it'd even be tough to get in there and, and first, because we had a few people said, oh man, I, you know, it seems expensive for these battle rattles. Well, one, obviously, if you're a member, it's 20% off. And two, if you just add it to a normal order, it's completely free shipping, right? So you don't have to pay the shipping because it'll just, it, the things are so lightweight and it won't even increase your shipping costs as well uh, on anything. If you're ordering like, let's just say a pack of power prawns or Alabama leprechauns or jerk shads or all of the above, add some rattles into your order and you know, the, the shipping is, is completely free on any battle rattle. Plus, once again, you save 20% off as a member on these and everything else in the store. So Luke's here, if you're listening, trying to put one of these thicker non-pointy rattles in and this yeah. is this is why you want nice ones this is why it's so important to have one that has a pointy end where you can easily insert otherwise you're going to spend half your day trying to get these rattles in in and out yeah so i made the pilot hole and uh and as normal right and then shoved it in and it's it's actually so big i mean it's it's actually so big that it won't really fit in the you know you know most soft plastics have the little undercarriage the, the opening that's really for for weed the soaks for for better hook sets and there's really just not enough room to even do this to be honest so again that's just another reason to uh to to not i guess to not really mess with these with the soft plastics it's uh tougher to do and it literally is just it was it was just going to be sticking out of one side or the other it's not even worth not even worth messing with Yep. So I, I, I personally think what we're going to find is there's going to be some circumstances where you just don't need that extra sound, you know, especially if like you're sight casting, like it goes, it takes me back, Luke, what was the name of that one lure that had led lights and all that, the, oh, the twitching lure, the twitching lure. I'm still upset about this. So we went out basically to prove a point, the twitching lure, don't buy it. It's a waste of money. We went and bought it for you and did the test. And they had some crazy claims out there that, oh, this thing, and it literally has like a USB charger for the LED lights. It looks like the 4th of July underwater. And and there's one, it, there's sound is cool. Has sound and light and all kinds of action is a little bit too much. And so we were in Tampa and we found, remember, like those are over slot snook. I still can just like visualize this because it's like when you see snook like that and they don't know you're there yet, that is, I mean, that's a dream come true for most inshore anglers. And I'm talking about big boys, super shallow, beautiful, clear day. We, we had the wind at our backs, like we could cast a mile and this thing cast pretty far. And we make a cast, multiple casts up to these different snook. What happened, Luke? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, we had to lead them a little bit more. And like with soft plaques, you get them a little bit closer because because they're quieter. But we, we would even lead the snook, you know, more than we normally would. And they were long gone. As soon as that lure, it's, uh, as soon as it hits the water, it starts actually, actually like literally vibrating, like a mechanical vibration and a little <laughs> red lights flashing. And uh, those snook were gone, long gone. It's just not natural. It's not even close to being natural. And, um, and, and yeah, so, so, it's not more is better situation. In many cases, it's it's moderation wins, which yes, is I would say uh, where I'm more going often with not this. the way yes. to go. Yep. And uh, and and it's too it's unique too where um, I'm doing some or I, I did some tests last year on the Rapala Skitter Walk versus the Super Spook Junior, and the Skitter Walk has you can probably hear it. It's like a one thumper, 
it's, it's deeper, it's a deeper thump. And then the Super Spook Junior has multiple rattles in there and some have a, a higher frequency. And I did the same type of test, right? Three casts, three casts, three casts, three casts. I did it for five days and under different conditions, obviously every day was different. I was logging the conditions and tracking the results. And what was interesting is in, in no case did one lure catch fish and the other one didn't. So, so it wasn't like a make or break thing. So um, just know that. But what was interesting is I did see a trend on one being better on the calmer days and then one being better on the, on the windier days when the water was all murked up and, and choppy. And the, so the deeper one actually seemed to, to outperform the, the higher pitch one on the windy days. So the windy days, the skitter walk had a slight advantage. And then the other days, right, the calmer days, the Super Spook Junior with a little bit higher frequency outperformed the, the other one, which was interesting. Um, and, and so I need to, it'd be interesting to do a test like with, the, this is like the original uh, Spook, the original Deer Spook, there's no rattles at all, right? And we used to catch a bunch of fish. Remember Joe now, Marco, this is like our, this is our lure. And we catch a bunch of big fish. And in that case, there's no rattles at all. So, um, so I think that, well, that was when anybody could go out there and catch a 20 pounds and up. It's true. It's probably true. Yeah. yeah. T time of the, uh, the, the amount of fishing pressure I'm sure was, uh, was, was a factor, but, uh, but yeah, it's just interesting. It'll be interesting. We're going to do some, again, more experiments to try to try to determine exactly what situations it's very helpful. What situations maybe it doesn't matter and other situations that it might actually be harmful. Yep. Um, so it'll be, it'll be fun to test. So don't all the top waters for the most part come with rattles now? Uh, no, I mean, like, you can buy you can buy the original Zero Spooks. They don't. Oh, have you can. So the okay, yeah. the OG still doesn't. Okay. Yeah, this mm. one's uh, this one's pretty new. Uh, but then, but all the Super Spooks, that's when they started having rounds. But most do, right? So I have have a whole tackle tray of a couple tackle trays of top waters. So it's getting out of hand, right? Here's two tackle trays of uh, these. All have rattles. These do not. These are all these are all the original Super Spooks or the original Spooks, and then these are a bunch of Skitter Walks. And other Rapala lures, and these all have rattles. So most, most have rattles. Yep. And so, if you've made it this far, we'll give you a little insider secret, if you will. So we are working on a couple new lures. Have been for quite some time. One is going to be a top water, and it has rattles, and it also has single inline hooks. Something that so many of us have been asking for. It still drives me nuts that most, not all, but most of these manufacturers still put these treble hooks oh they drive me nuts and from everything we've tested it does not hurt your chances of catching fish and in many cases you can actually land bigger bigger fish with the single inline hooks uh so we got a pretty unique and uh and we're pretty pumped about it we're not going to tell you the name just yet but we'll have a new top water coming here this uh this summer and a new slam shady with a rattle cavity just based on what we're seeing so far, and obviously you don't have to put rattles in there, but for just the ease of access to have the cavity, it is pretty nice. That way you're not having to do surgery on it, or even a you know a little seven-year-old can just sit there and put the little battle rattle right in there and just give you one more chance to catch fish. And, and where we were going earlier with this, Luke mentioned the moderation. There are going to be some times, like maybe sight casting in a foot of water. We just don't need it, right? You're just leading the fish. You don't need all the extra stuff. You don't need bells and whistles and lights. It was just so eye-opening to see these snook. I mean, I'm talking like bolted, like they had never seen anything like that before. The thing's got red lights and blue lights. I mean, it looked like a police car, you know, on 4th of July. It was nuts underwater. So do not buy that lure. Uh, we will never, ever recommend it. That is one of the worst lures I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And, uh, and they stopped making it and someone up, some other knucklehead like bought the rights to it. And uh, I saw it again and they were like using the funniest part. And, and so thank you for some of you who have sent us like footage of this stuff. There's some groups out there that are like stealing our footage. And it was a very negative review. By them. We've never done that many negative reviews. That was like the first one that we did was just like, guys, do not touch this lure. It is a complete ripoff. It is not good. And they actually stole the footage from that video for an ad they were running 
to sell you that same stinking lure. Do you remember that? Because we actually did catch a snook. Finally, we caught a snook, but it was it was ah. a spot that was loaded with them, and we probably would have caught twenty or thirty. If oh we yeah, had. we would have destroyed it. We could see this; they're everywhere, and we finally yeah we finally caught one of like the end of the day as the sun's going down. Um, and they it wasn't used even big too. Yeah, it was yeah. it was like a sixteen inch snook. Like that was mind blowing. So they stole our footage to to sell their horrible lure. So do not buy that thing. What's it called again? The twitching lure twitching i believe that's it yeah, yeah the twitching and they maybe change the names but if it's you see something that, that if if you need to plug it into a computer do not buy it you do not need that that is not natural at all it is way overkill and it will actually in most cases will be seen it will hurt your chances you do not need your lure to plug into a computer <laughs> i mean we we did a whole podcast on that right the simple ones the stuff that just continues to work like a paddle tail and a little five inch jerk shad and a top water plug, a white bucktail. I mean, you don't have to have the craziness. So um, yeah, we're really pumped to have some new opportunities to use some of these rattles, new opportunities to test this out. And, uh, and we love your feedback on it too. We'd love to hear if you've had any pros or cons using any type of rattles, the ones that are already kind of pre-built and sun inside some of these hard baits to uh to putting them in your salt plastics i know in texas louisiana some of the murkier water they seem to really love rattles the same reason like popping corks right i mean those what are they called the cajun thunders and stuff i mean all those really popular popping corks i mean they have little rattles they have beads on them uh just to make more noise it's just hey it's that boom it attracts fish over there it gets their attention they look at it and there's a bait hanging down there and boom they're uh they're on like donkey kong so yeah, and, and I think at least so far what I've seen as far as the rattles, right? When when they're the most helpful and when they're the least helpful, it's really it's really in line with with just overall just vibration. And, and it's it's when the water is super clear and calm, that's when they're the the least needed and potentially even harmful. I, I would I would even venture to say, um, just because it's it's just when everything's quiet, just like you know, remember like camping as a kid, if you're in the tent, there's like no winds, no nothing. And like a little squirrel or something is walking on some, some, uh, some leaves. And it sounds like it's a bear out there. Right. It's just, it's just unnatural. Like when things are calm, just things aren't moving and things aren't making noise. Is that why you always pee your pants when we're camping and it's real? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I also want to add clear, calm and shallow, right? Cause like you fish some of those docks, it could still be a calm day, but the docks are seven feet deep changes a little bit. So if you're yeah. in, Two, two, three feet or less, and you're fishing super shallow and clear calm. You don't need these rattles, in yeah, my opinion, calm, in my opinion. Yeah, because that's that's when the predators themselves are are more vulnerable, right? When they're up in the shallow water, and so so they're on high alert. They're up there to feed, but so you want them to find your lure, but you don't want it to like just be like the twitch, you know that that police siren car going going through the flat. And so, and so when I when I'm always using rattles or vibration, I guess I should say rattles and or vibration is when I'm fishing those windy days like we had yesterday. Was, the wind was cranking, the water's churned up, right? There's just a lot of underwater motion and noise and chaos. And that's when, if you don't use, uh, you know, rattles or vibration, just the, the fish are going to have a really hard time finding your lure. You're literally going to have to buzz it right in front of their face. Otherwise, they'll have no idea it's there. And so the, 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 the I guess the windier or the, the murkier, the, the more fish have to rely on, on their senses other than sight, that's when I would I would argue to say that having rattles would definitely be a benefit. Obviously, you don't want to have the police siren still. You don't want it to be just crazy loud. But uh, but that's when uh, that's when at least from what I've seen so far, that's when rattles make the biggest difference. Cool. Reminds me of the time we went fishing in uh, Sebastian. I don't know if you were there for that one. Uh, Todd and, and Richard and I were on a tent there in uh, you know Sebastian uh, State Park and. Um, Todd had basically gotten up to sleepwalk and had to go to the bathroom and thought he was out of the tent and he was still in the tent and just started peeing all over uh, Richard in, in a sleeping bag. And so the next morning, and I, and I was out for the whole thing and the next morning, Richard's sleeping in the, in the car and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I got peed on last night. <laughs> Always good times at Sebastian. Those were some good memories of, uh, of camping there, especially the multi-days. Yeah. Uh, by that last day, I mean, no shower, just absolutely reek and caught a lot of snook back there. That was, that was a blast. 
Yeah, I remember wading back in that little, we found a little lagoon back behind the, the campground. So yeah. we, never, we didn't catch any big fish. We, that, was, that was probably, the, it was, at that time, it was the most snook I've ever caught in one day. Just yeah. wading out there. No uh, no boat or anything. We just went out there to have some fun. We grabbed some fishing rods and it was a good old time. Just imagine if we had rattles back then, we would have really slayed them. Yeah, that water was murky, so it probably, and and yeah, so yeah, more tests coming soon, right? I, I, I really enjoy doing the tests and it's just cool to, cool to see the the kind of the small changes that that can make big differences and not every experiment has had a huge you know eye-opening result but some have and and uh so we'll, you know, that'll be a big focus for the remainder of the year is to just try to really dig down and see you know what actually what matters and what doesn't all right and then and then also when and what conditions so more details coming soon yep 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 so guys we appreciate you and if you haven't picked up your battle rattles, go add it to your cart, buy something else to, you know, basically the free shipping since those things don't really weigh much at all. Uh, no reason for you to have to pay shipping on them. Add it to your cart with some power prawns or slam shady something. And, uh, but the power prawns are the easiest because it's already got a rattle cavity and that thing is proven to work. Uh, it's the reason they put the cavities in in the first place in Brazil. They, they always put little rattles in there. I mean, it's just one more reason to, to uh, you know to have an edge over the fish we're usually fishing that a little bit deeper as, uh, as well in uh, in most of the cases so that's all at fishstrong.com and of course if you're an insider member 20 percent off uh everything there that we uh, we discussed and uh just one more reason to join us in the insider club we've got some really cool stuff coming uh, we're really loving these live calls so every thursday we get on a, a live zoom call just like if you're listening we're luke and i are recording this over zoom and, uh, you know, get hundreds of our members on there every, every week, ask questions. Hey, here's where I'm fishing this weekend. Where do you think I should go? Uh, sometimes we'll have certain topics or even guests really, really, really helpful. The kind of like having a fishing guide in your back pocket with the main emphasis on trends, what's working right now. Uh, cause you know, Luke's out in the water every week. Our fishing coaches are out there every week. We've got people every five minutes are putting up fishing reports. And so we're just trying to like cut down the learning curve and tell you exactly the types of spots you should go fishing every single week to catch inshore slams. This is not going to help you for catching tuna offshore. This is for redfish, speckled trout, snook, flounder, even some big old mangrove snapper that Luke caught this week. Uh, any of our favorite inshore saltwater species. If that's you and you fish anywhere from Texas to Florida, Virginia, or any state in between, then I would urge you to join us in their 22,000 fishing fanatics that are in there uh, we're having a blast the community is so awesome that you know the tackle discounts are awesome we've got a couple members who've spent well over five thousand uh, dollars in our store from rods reels and chum and all the lures and line etc and uh you know 20 percent off of that you can do the math i mean it, it pays for itself real fast uh but even more importantly we're unbiased you know we don't we have no sponsors. And we've had many companies who have offered to sponsor us and even a couple that have given some decent money waving in our face. And we've said no to every single one because we want to keep it unbiased. We want to be the consumer reports of the saltwater fishing world to be able to go out there and test stuff with our own dime and, and our own fishing spots and, and report back to you, hey, here's what's working, here's what's not. And uh, I, I, I love that. And, and hopefully as long as we're around. We'll just keep uh, keep that up and keep saying no to all sponsors and just being able to tell it like it is. Because that one, you're saving money in the discounts, but two, you're avoiding the stuff that doesn't work, like the twitching lure and some other things we report on to our members that we says, guys and gals, avoid this. Uh, here's what works. Here's what doesn't work. The whole goal: save you money and save you time, putting you in that 90-10 zone to catch more inshore slams per trip. You can find that all at saltstrong.com. Up at the top, you'll see a little button to join. And if you're a current member, thank you so much. You're the foundation of our company. We appreciate you big time. You're our family. I know we got an event coming up here soon. We got a couple more. Um, those are really exciting for us because the online club part is cool. You know, we used to do some live events and it went downhill just because of COVID. You know, it, it was a little bit tougher to do them. And uh, now that things are getting a little bit better, back to these live events and just one more reason to be a member. Really, really pumped to start doing this again. Yeah, going to be fun. And uh, yeah, more coming soon too. And that, and even just meetups too. We have a section in the community for for meetups and, and those are becoming uh, more and more common yep. where you know, we, we set some up ourselves, but also, you know, all members can set up, you know, any member can set up and meet up whenever they want. And I uh, just, this is a fun way to go out and 
uh, meet some good, meet some fun anglers, you know, and, and just kind of just share tips, tactics, and, um, and, and yeah, just, and it's all region basis too. So no matter if you're in Texas, uh, you know, anywhere along the Gulf in Florida or even up to, to Virginia, actually, even in, we have some members up in uh, New Jersey. Oh yeah. Uh, New York area as well. So that the whole, the whole section, you know, anybody can do meetups and, uh, and just find, uh, find fellow members near you. Yep. So that's it. Saltshore.com guys. We appreciate you. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review. It helps us big time to be, to be found, to find more people. And it's how we keep this whole thing completely ad free. Not like some of these other podcasts where you got to wait seven minutes just to even hear the, the co-host talk is just a bunch of ads. We want to keep it completely ad free. So all we ask in return is, is to subscribe, give us a, a five-star review if you love it. And then share it with a friend. We uh, we we love that big time. And obviously, if you're watching this on the the YouTube, subscribe there is uh, as well helps us out big time. We appreciate you guys. We love you, and we'll talk to you on the next episode. We out. Peace. See ya.